Remember when I said the vast majority of gun control is pushed by Democrat politicians? Well, this is one of those times where it's also the Republicans. Appears to have just struck a deal on new gun laws. The text of the bill is now out, just introduced in the Senate. It's called the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Here's what it delivers. Incentives for states to adopt red flag laws, increase penalties for gun traffickers, enhance background checks for people under 21, and it closes the so-called boyfriend loophole. Both Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and the Minority Leader Mitch McConnell say they will be backing the bill. I want you to keep in mind that the Uvalde school shooting happened a month ago, and already they have an 80-page bill? Then on top of that, the Senate voted to proceed to the bill just more than an hour after negotiators unveiled its text, giving lawmakers little time to digest its details. Look, I'm admittedly a slow reader, but only an hour to read and fully understand what's in a bill that's 80 pages long is ridiculous. These bills aren't written like romance novels. They're written like the hieroglyphics on the wall of an Egyptian tomb. There are parts of this bill that I don't have a problem with. The mental health portion of the bill, I don't have a problem with making a specific law that makes straw purchases more illegal than they already are redundant as hell, but I don't have a problem with including juvenile records and the background check of anyone younger than 21. I don't have a problem with, well, as long as the only difference precluding an 18 to 20 year old from being able to purchase an AR-15 would already preclude them if they were 21 and above, i.e. a felony and not simply because they were an emo when they were freshmen in high school and people thought that they were weird. However, the part of the bill that I have a problem with that should not be a part of this bill is the red flag law portion and the so-called closing of the boyfriend loophole portion. Let's start with the red flag law portion. In 2020, I did a video titled The Truth About Red Flag Laws, where I explained how and why red flag laws are unconstitutional. Red flag laws or extreme risk protection orders, as some states call them, are state laws that allow law enforcement, family members, friends, romantic partners, co-workers, or close associates to ask courts to confiscate the guns of someone who a judge believes is a danger to himself or others based on a one-sided story of the people asking the judge. The first problem with red flag laws is due process or the lack thereof. Too many people think the right to own a gun is a privilege. Driving a car is a privilege. Public education is a privilege. Public housing is a privilege. Owning a gun, however, is a right, which means it can only be taken from you if you're charged and convicted of a crime. Red flag laws not only not charge you with a crime, you're presumed guilty of a crime you haven't been charged with. But because someone had a secret meeting with a judge about you, the cops can now come and confiscate your guns immediately. Hmm. Police randomly showing up at a gun owner's house to confiscate their guns even though the gun owner hasn't broken the law. I wonder what could go wrong. Let's say no one gets killed in the confiscation process. Now the only way to get your guns back is to have a hearing to prove to the judge that already determined that you were a danger, that you're not a danger. Now ask yourself, do you think this judge that already thinks you're a danger is gonna be more or less inclined to change his mind? Or will he, out of abundance of caution, affirm his initial decision? Now you have to hire an attorney and as a lawyer, let me be the first to tell you, we ain't cheap and you still might lose. Oh, and you thought the cops were gonna be nice and hold your guns for you for free while all of this is going on? Oh, no, 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 no. You either have to pay the local government to hold your guns, give them to a friend, or pay a local gun dealer. God forbid you have more than a few guns, you'll be paying some people's mortgage just to store your guns. At this point, you not only unconstitutionally had your guns confiscated, they're making you pay for it. And another thing, if you live with someone that also has a gun, they might take their gun too. I mean, if the whole point of this law is to prevent this person from gaining access to a firearm, it only makes sense to take all the guns in the house, right? Now you have two people with their rights violated because of a secret meeting with a judge by a person who risks little to nothing as far as consequence if they're lying. But who are we kidding? No one ever lies about someone being abusive and a danger purely out of spite. We live during a time where people call you evil simply for having a different political opinion. Hell, many anti-gunners think simply owning an AR-15 makes you a potential mass murderer. And a lot of these people are the same judges who would be deciding these red flag law cases. The potential for abuse of red flag laws is simply staggering. And considering the lengths I've seen anti-gunners go to to silence and disarm gun owners, giving them red flag laws is like giving a child dynamite. It's only a matter of time before something goes wrong. The anti-gun lobby, along with Joe Biden, want a national red flag law. 
because they can't get one passed. They are now trying to pass a national red flag law through the back door. This bill wants to use your tax dollars to bribe states to implement red flag laws to the tune of $750 million using a national standard. Essentially, this bill says, hey, states, if you pass our unconstitutional red flag law, we'll give you money. Think about that for a second. The government is using your money to bribe your state to pass an unconstitutional law that can take your guns away from you, even if you haven't broken any laws. And you have to use your own money to prove that you're not going to break any laws while you have to pay the government to hold on to the guns they took from you. Yeah, that is unbelievably flagrant. Now, let's talk about this so-called boyfriend loophole. Right now, if you are convicted of misdemeanor domestic violence against your wife, husband, baby mama, baby daddy, or live with your significant other, you will lose your right to own a gun. What this bill wants to do is update the definition of misdemeanor crime of domestic violence to include individuals who have or have had a current or recent continuing serious relationship of a romantic or intimate nature with their victim. This is nothing more than a way to lower the standard to take away your right to own a firearm. A spouse or someone you have a child with is a different level of commitment than dating someone for a period of time. As a result, you are less likely to falsely accuse someone of domestic violence if you're married to them or they are the mother or father of your child because there are real world consequences of your actions, i.e. your spouse or the person you share a child with will go to jail, lose their rights. However, when you're just dating, there are no consequences. Your girlfriend or boyfriend can simply accuse you of domestic violence and it literally will have no effect on their life. While you are left having to prove your innocence so you don't have your rights taken. Oh, but wait, you probably already will have your rights taken away because the same false accusation of abuse can be used to file a red flag lawsuit. All they would have to do is go to a judge and say you abused them and made terroristic threats against them. What do you think the judge is going to do? He's not going to risk being wrong. He's going to err on the side of caution and grant the red flag law. If he's wrong and you prove your innocence, the worst that will happen to the judge is that you paid a ton of money to prove your innocence and a ton of money to get your guns back from the government. However, if he's wrong and doesn't red flag you and you happen to do something, he has to explain why he didn't red flag you. And that's assuming he's trying to be remotely objective. God forbid he's anti-gun, he'll literally be salivating to red flag you. This is not a loophole, it's common sense. Being married to someone and dating are not the same, not even close. This is why this part of the bill is trash and nothing more than another piece in a scheme to make it as easy as possible to have your right to bear arms taken away from you. Keep in mind, we're not even talking about a felony domestic abuse here. We're talking about a misdemeanor. They got their way in the 90s when they said you can have your right taken away from misdemeanor domestic abuse if you're married. Now, they want it to apply to people who are dating. Next, they'll want it to apply to your coworkers. After that, they'll want it to apply to any person on the street. The Republicans who voted for this or who do vote for this are an embarrassment. You're like little puppy dogs running behind the Democrats, tail wagging, asking, what can we do to make you happy? At what point are you all going to stop and ask, what have the Democrats ever given us on guns? Have they ever made it easier for people to defend themselves? Have they ever come to us and say, hey, how can we help you protect the Second Amendment? No, they never do. You all are the ones always running after the Democrats like a bunch of fans. At this point, the Democrats should just start an OnlyFans page for all the rhinos in the Republican Party kissing their ass. You goofy Republicans who signed this bill are patting yourselves on the back, but you conceded to a bunch of bullies who will never be happy with any amount of placating that you do. They don't even hide it. They say it out loud. In the description section of this video, I'm going to leave all the names of the Republicans who signed on to vote for this trash bill. Make sure you reach out to them and let them know how you feel about them placating to a party who literally wants to destroy the Second Amendment. You know, we talk a lot about empowerment in this country, except for when it comes to the Second Amendment. However, I can't think of anything more empowering than having the most effective tool to protect you and your family. So help me spread this message by liking and sharing this video with everyone you know. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment because the Second Amendment, when it said militia, it wasn't talking about the government. It was talking about you. Also, if you want to know where to find the I'm the Militia shirt and merchandise, click the I'm the Militia link in the description section 
of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, make sure you hit that bell symbol.